Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and we are here for some quick practice problems as we begin to think about temperature and pressure, especially as they relate to gases. Let's take a quick look at this first problem in which we're interpreting a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. It says a sample of gas at constant pressure is graphed at two different temperatures. Which of the following must be true? A. T1 is a higher temperature. B. T2 is a higher temperature. C, the gas becomes lighter, or D, the gas becomes heavier. All right, so hopefully we recognize that simply by heating the gas, we aren't going to change its mass. All that we're gonna do by heating that gas up is cause it to have a greater amount of kinetic energy. Now, think about how temperature relates to kinetic energy. The more kinetic energy that a sample has, the higher the temperature. So T2 is in fact the curve that is at a higher temperature. Boom, done. Ooh, all right, next question, another different Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. This time we have four samples of different gases all at the same temperature. We've got carbon dioxide, methane, sulfur hexafluoride, and hydrogen gases. Our job is to identify which correctly assigns each curve to its appropriate gas. All right, first, let's bust out our nomenclature skills. Carbon dioxide is CO2. Methane we're told is CH4, sulfur, hexafluoride, SF6, and hydrogen gas, H2. Now importantly, the analysis was performed at constant temperature and pressure. So all we need to recognize is that the curve that has the greatest average velocity is going to be the lightest gas. And the curve that has the lowest average velocity is going to be the heaviest gas. And so I'm going to do some quick mental math. Each carbon has a mass of 12 grams per mole, each oxygen 16 grams per mole. So carbon dioxide has a molar mass of 44 grams per mole. Methane, CH4, again carbon 12 grams per mole, each hydrogen 1 gram per mole. So we're talking 16 grams per mole for our molar mass. Sulfur has a mass, molar mass of 32 grams per mole and each fluorine roughly 20. So I'm looking at a molar mass of about 150 grams per mole. Again, just a rough estimate. And then hydrogen gas, again, one gram per mole there, we're gonna end up with a molar mass of about two grams per mole for our diatomic molecule of hydrogen. So as we look at this, hydrogen is most likely going to be curve D or the gas that has the greatest average velocity at this given temperature and pressure. And A is most likely our heaviest gas, or sulfur hexafluoride, and it will have the slowest average velocity at this given temperature and pressure. Carbon dioxide, our next heaviest gas, most likely B, and then methane, most likely C. And that corresponds to answer choice D. And we are done. 